the twist. Welcome to Katie Rose Straight Up with a Twist. I wasn't supposed to be making any episodes until the new year. And with what's been going on with me recently, I just felt like I needed to talk and get behind a microphone and release my feelings. And that's kind of why I started this podcast in the first place, so that I could do less on social media and more on this if people wanted to come and listen. So some of you may know, uh, if you have listened to my earlier podcast on infertility, I have had three failed IUIs, which is the turkey baster method, and now three failed IVF uh, procedures um, resulting in, in no baby. And I have no frozen embryos. So I went in for round three and I was nervous because I didn't bring my like numbing cream. I bought some medical grade stuff a while ago. And then like I have like a Brazilian wax spray that helps numb it actually. My hand for the IV. And I forgot it. And so I was freaking out. And you know, the lady I have is always great. And she did it real quick and it hurt really bad. But then she's like, oh, it's kind of blowing up a little bit. And so then her and the anesthesiologist were trying to decide if they should take it out and redo it. And of course that freaked me out. I almost threw up. They had to get me a bucket because I was like, I got really hot. They had to get me ice because I was like, you know, it's like your brain just starts like what? And like, I just was nauseous, you know? And, um, but then they were looking at the drip. They're like, it's going in. They're like, the fluid is working. And, you know, and then it didn't really, it didn't continue to swell and it didn't look that bad. So, um, so they just kept it in there and, after I came out, um, the, you know, doctor said that there was some follicles that just didn't have any, <laughs> didn't have any eggs in them. They were empty, um, which is actually a syndrome, um, that can happen an empty follicle syndrome. So now I'm like, do I have that? <laughs> like, I don't know. And I only got four and only two were mature. And then those two did not fertilize. So that's where I'm at. You know, my way of coping is to express, and I'm not saying I'm closing myself off, but I I just need to express the way I'm feeling right now Um, and and just kind of get things off my chest without people thinking I'm just angry and, you know, making assumptions. Of course, when you're grieving, you can be angry about many things, but um, I'm one of those people that has a brain that runs a mile a minute, kind of like Robin Williams. Um, I think of eight thoughts at once. Four I'll forget, and four that I'm trying to grab onto as they fly by above my head and, and I attempt to hone into something creative and substantial. <laughs> but yesterday and today, I can't think of anything. It's kind of freaking me out. It's um, the meaning of numbness. When people say they feel numb, my brain is nowhere. It's just floating in the abyss waiting for somebody to guide it, um, just kind of waiting for one of those, you know, quick thoughts to fly by and latch on and waiting to catch the next wave, you know, um, the next train. I'm, I'm pretty strong and independent and I take everything as it comes. I always, you know, cross the bridge when I get there and I stay positive, but I simply don't know what to do anymore. (laughs) And I kind of feel like I need someone else to tell me what to do. I need someone to take my hand and say, do this. This is the answer because I just don't think I can make decisions for myself anymore. And if this sounds religious to you, like, you know, yes, exactly, Haiti, that's right. Jesus, take the wheel. You know, I've already been asking for that. I've prayed all the prayers and I know many, many of people have prayed for me as well, out loud, through text, all on me, <laughs> you know, but the truth of the matter is, that it's not some magic spell. You know, people tell you, I know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen? Like, really? Like, what sorcery is this? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I wonder, what it, what is it about you that knows? Would, wouldn't I be the first to know? Shouldn't I know this? Like, is it appropriate now to say, hey, you were wrong, actually? Again, also. Because <laughs> this is you know, years in the making and, and every time people are like, I just know it's going to happen, you know? And, and if you're thinking, oh, it's because you aren't close enough to God, it's like, 
you know, like maybe they're blaming me, you know, or something like, no, I know, you know, this for you, you, it's because you didn't believe it for you. Well, that's just false. And that would be judgmental and, you know, accusatory, you know, just assuming that people know how your faith works, you know? And I guess like, thank you for the vote of confidence, but like the prayers didn't work yet. You know, I'm not mad at anyone for praying confidently for me and I'm not mad at them. It's just, I'd rather someone pray for something as a whole than to claim that they know or are somehow magical. Like they are seers of the future. You know, does that make sense? Like I've had some wonderful people, like I said, you know, pray for me and I'll take that all day and all night. It's, it's, it's just tough if someone claims that they have the answer and they know, and then it doesn't happen. Um, you know, if we knew everything, then we would have the power to change everything. And right now my brain is just shutting off. Like it took me so long to accept the thought of surrogacy, so long, that I would never be able to carry a baby, right? Like I had to accept that. Like seeing all my friends have this special attention when they're pregnant and baby showers and, you know, people being like, oh, take my seat because you have a belly. You know, like I think... Pregnant women are beautiful, but I let that reality go. And I said, Katie, just do this. Like all I needed to do was get some eggs out of my body so that someone else could do it. And I would have accepted that. I would have to accept watching somebody else carry my baby. I was okay with that. And now I can't even get anything out of my body that's viable. And it's, it's hard to explain how broken I feel. You know, as I was laying in, in, in the bed and in the hospital, um, getting ready to be wheeled into my surgery, which is one of the most vulnerable surgeries, surgeries you could ever be wheeled into, by the way, you know, with your, you know, legs and stirrups and vagina out. And you're just like, oh, OK, like, you know what I said to my doctor? I was like, have fun in Narnia. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Like, I just like make a joke about it because that's what helps me cope, you know, and you know, the woman in the, you know, the curtain next to me, it's not rooms, it's just curtains, you know, exclaimed that she got 16 eggs. And I almost like wooed for her next to the curtain, but I'm like, no, that's inappropriate, Katie. Like, just keep it to yourself. You know, like I was happy for her, you know, I, that is always my feeling. I, I, I don't know. I don't get jealous. I get excited because I know what she's going through. And I have a friend who got 40 a few weeks ago. You know, my record was six. That was my record. And this last time I got four and none of them worked. And it's like getting a low grade on, on an exam <laughs> or like getting the bronze medal or like an honorable mention, you know. It's just, it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel your best. And there's no amount of like training or effort I could do to become better at this. And I think that's what the hardest part is. I am what I am. This is what it is. You know, um, I have what I have in my body, <laughs> you know, um, there's no like food I can eat. That's going to be like, and now you're going to get more eggs. If you eat some more avocado, like it's just not how it works. You know, um, my husband has always been the one that stays positive because he just feels like, what's the point in having negative thoughts, right? Like, we're going to keep doing what we what we're doing, what we have to do and that's all we can do. And I think he always just truly thought that it was going to happen. You know, um it's it's got to eventually, right? Like we're doing all the right things. Like we're doing all the things. For the first time um this last round, I think he feels different. I think he's starting to get how I feel. Like he's realizing like, wow, this might not actually happen. I might not actually be a father to our own biology, to our own little creation, you know? And I think he's finally allowing himself to feel what I've been feeling every, every round, every loss, you know? Um, and I have to vainly admit that I've just always been curious, right? I know there's like an old book. I can't remember if it's Fahrenheit 451, which book was it, you know, where the lady's in the rocking chair on the front patio and she's talking about like, yeah, it's cool having your own kids and seeing what you look like, right? Seeing what happens, like what they look like and they look like you and it's kind of vain, right? Like maybe I think about that more than the average person that can get pregnant 
who never has to really think about those obstacles and what it means and the biology of it all. But it's it's just an interesting facet of our lives. You know, if people already deal with postpartum depression, imagine me borrowing sperm or borrowing an egg and then looking at the baby and realizing it doesn't even look like me or my husband. You know, if, if postpartum depression isn't hard enough, I'm nervous that I would look at that baby and say, that's not my kid. So if I was going to have a child that wasn't truly mine, I'd rather adopt, right? Like, you know, and just and just give it a wonderful home to live in. And, and there's so many kids too that are older that don't get, you know, homes. And sometimes I'm like, maybe we should adopt a three-year-old, a four-year-old, you know, like catch up to our friends that already have four-year-olds, you know, like, I yeah, I don't know how I feel about adoption either, you know? It's also a very difficult process. And I, it's like, I don't know how much I can handle, you know? Um, and it, it's it's not fair. Life isn't, right? Like there are people who don't deserve kids, don't want them. And there are people who are awful to their bodies and still manage to create life. Um, my husband and I have done our best, you know, to create a home where we could have a family and we were pre- prepared for it. You know, I, I'm torn because I can't, see my path anymore like am I supposed to just say fuck it all and move somewhere else and start a new career you know or just be like I mean I know that a lot of people don't think before they leap when they're speaking and they're just trying to say something nice or helpful but you know when someone says like keep trying or just like I do my best to think of that comment as they mean well and and they just don't know better and they just don't want me to give up hope because there's these other things that they don't realize that are called risks and money and quality of life. And there's just so much more that goes into it. You know, it's not like we're ever going to stop trying. Like we can have all the sex that we want, clearly. And it's still not going to produce a baby. I mean, there's always hope. But the implication that we are going to stop trying, you know, because that's what you're saying. It's like you're trying to tell me, Katie, okay, you know, don't give up. I'm like, well, I, yeah, I'm not, you know? And, and it's like, we needed someone to tell us to keep trying. Like, that's what's hard, you know? And, and, you know, I've seen people like Jennifer Aniston, you know, who had to kind of give up on that dream as well. And she's just putting all of her heart into her career right now. And I think of that too. I'm like, okay, well then maybe that's what I'm meant to do. You know, of course we will keep trying. Um, I don't know if that means that path is IVF. I, I don't have those answers right now, but but please don't doubt that. We will be trying, you know. Um, you know, and then there's people that just say like, do acupuncture, do this, you know, like with this, their pseudoscience and anecdotal evidence. You know, that really, that really is the main thing that gets my bee boiling. You know, just because you have a friend who did this and that and the other doesn't mean it's going to happen for me. Uh, you know, uh, I had a friend who did three rounds of IVF and then she had sex and had a baby. It doesn't mean that that'll happen for me. You know, that's a very nice story. And I think those are wonderful stories and I'm very happy for those people. It's just a lot of those things are coincidences or, you know, just anecdotal evidence. It's not a science or else everybody would be doing that. You know, doctors would say, hey, you know what? Statistics show that if you do three rounds of IVF and then you have sex after, you'll get pregnant. It's 90% proven theory. Yay, hooray. You know, but it's not. You know, it, 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 there's I, I can't just like put my legs over my head and boom, I have a baby. You know, trust me, I've done all of those weird things. You know, everything I'm doing is is, you know, is just to help you know, those little things, the acupuncture, the vitamins, you know, it's, it's to relax you or, or boost your, you know, blood levels, um, and the chemicals in your body. You know, if you're low in iron, take more iron, you know, to keep everything as balanced as possible so that we can rule out those as a possible interference. Um, going to an acupuncturist would be so much cheaper too. If that's all of we'd have to do, that'd be great. You know? So sadly, it's not me trying to be mean, but I'm not going to engage in conversation with people anymore who say, just do acupuncture, just do this, because they're clearly not listening and they're not paying attention. And I'm scared now. I am scared. I'm scared that I'm going to get cancer from all these procedures because that's one of the risks. Did you know that? I'm putting myself at risk 
all the time when I do this stuff. It's not just, ouch, it hurts. Suck it up, Katie. That's not it. I could do all of this, get cancer, and still have no baby. I'm scared of a rupture, of endometriosis, of so many things that could be wrong with me and trying to do surgeries to fix it that could also harm me. And now I have to try and make these awful decisions. Do I want to keep trying and risk the health of my body and my life, you know, with the family that I already have? Or do I want to keep trying and say, fuck the risks? Like if I get an embryo, do I want to risk putting it inside of my uterus, which has already failed me, or go through the surrogacy process? You know, the constant loss is devastating. I'm putting myself through what feels like a death and and sometimes is depending on your beliefs like over and over and over again. And every time I feel like my baby died and a portion of my soul dies every time. I've had these uh, visceral dreams lately. I'm holding this baby on my couch at my current house and I'm smiling, you know, I'm sitting Indian style and... And I'm playing with the happiest baby I've ever seen. Like I can feel like more love and wanting to protect it and and having all this gratitude for this little life than I've ever felt for anything. Like I'm going to give this baby everything I've got. Like I feel myself like I kiss her little cheeks, maybe his. (laughs) In my dreams, it's a girl. And I can hear like the cutest little baby coos. And I can feel like the weight of this baby in my arms. I can see myself and I can see this baby. And then I wake up and I have nothing. I have nothing again and again and again. And it's the sweetest nightmare. It's uh, it's really gloomy out today. Fitting for how I feel. Uh, My ovaries hurt still. Um... Normally, it's a quicker recovery. I don't know. My boobs are super swollen. Like, they feel like they're going to burst. I don't know why this recovery is worse. Of course, that concerns me. Like, how much more can my body actually take and withstand? You know, what about what about my heart? Like, I'm scared that I'm breaking myself in so many ways. Like, I'm a happy person. I'm, like, so afraid I'm going to just, like, lose who I am and just be this, like, I don't know, and, and just compare myself to, like, the world around me and their growing families and it's it's next to impossible not to. I mean, it's everywhere. You can't avoid it. And then it's like you just always wonder and allow the judgment of the world to enter my mind, you know, like wondering if someone thinks I'm giving up or I didn't pray enough or I wasn't connected to God enough. I didn't try hard enough. You know, I've had more of a connection to God than I've ever had. I've read a passage from that little, you know, Jesus is calling book every day. It helps, but it also makes me want to throw it out the window. Like, I understand that, like, first of all, this is just written by a woman, you know, so the messages and the passages, you know, it's like she'll put like a little, you know, link at the bottom, you know, from, you know, for the Bible. And um, I know it's not a link. What is wrong with my brain right now? Scripture. What What is the thing? Anyways, the little messages are just simply to help us get through life, right? when it's hard. They're not magic resources. They don't give us answers. They give us peace. They give us peace to get through the rejection. And sometimes God tells you no. Sometimes he just says no. I'm just trying to make peace with that while still finding hope that I could get a yes. Like maybe. Like it might be a different yes. But at the end of the day, I do not hold the key or the answer and nobody does. And I'm just along for the ride. You know, this doesn't make me a woman with a lack of faith. It makes me a faithful woman who is extremely rational and understanding of like of what this life on earth is. And that helps me cope with it every day. It helps me not be depressed. It helps me not blame God. You know, it's it's so much easier said than done, y'all. Like, how do you think I feel? Like I yell at my body all the time because it feels like my body is the one who's giving up, not my soul, not my heart. Like I could understand if this was my choice. But it's not. So sometimes with the wrong words, people can make me feel like I'm not I'm not doing the right thing. I've done holistic acupuncture, tons of vitamins at different even times of my cycle. You know, uh, the Chinese incense that smells like ass, by the way, Chinese teas, yoga, Pilates, warm socks on my feet, heating pads, prayers. And I've even considered witchcraft spells, <laughs> which they offer on Etsy. Can you believe that? 
yeah, there's like, you know, covens and they are like, yeah, I come from a family of witches and we'll do a spell for you, you know? <laughs> like So like my doctor said, like at the end of the day, it takes a sperm and an egg. That's what we know. If my egg isn't viable and his sperm isn't breaking through properly and chromosomes aren't doing their thing or whatever, then that's it. It's not the vitamin. It's not the needle someone shoved into my neck and it's not the wrong prayer. So like people like, please spare me the pseudoscience, which which is what it is. If you look it up, like it's all pseudoscience, like just re research that one thing yourself, you know, rather than claiming it works because it, it there's no magic spell, you know, and all I wanted for Christmas was a baby. And now all I want for Christmas is understanding. I just want, I just want patience and love and hugs and just people to love my husband and I as the humans that we are, because this is my, this might be all we, we have, you know, to offer. And I don't want expectations, judgment, non-scientific suggestions. I just, I want support. I want love. I want empathy. You know, the thoughts and the kind messages honestly are what have been getting me through. And I want to know that my existence is enough, is it's just as important as the one I'm trying to create. You know, I'm in a lot more pain after the surgery, um, more so than the last two. Like I said, I don't, I don't know why, but maybe he poked me more because he said there was even some empty follicles, which was yay. Awesome. I have empty follicles. Um, <laughs> and maybe my body's just tired from the amount of attempts, but you know, I'm still having sharp pains in my ovaries and, um, you know, I just feel like my boobs are going to burst, but I'm, I'm just taking, you know, ibuprofen for the inflammation, but, um, if you'd really like to support me, I'll be playing a sheep at SeaWorld's A Wondrous Night. <laughs> so it's a hard show to do emotionally right now, but when you're going through something like this, but, um, you know, it, it's also a fun show. So, but um, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks to the friends who've reached out. You know, I've read every single comment and message and um, it means a lot. I'm uh, I'm currently in a state of shock. I feel like I'm doing the stages of grief backwards somehow. <laughs> like even life feels backwards. Like, I don't know. I, I hope I hope what I'm saying comes across honest and not as angry or, you know, as some parts may seem. I'm 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 sad and I'm just trying to share my perspective, you know, a real perspective of, of what this is. Um, I'm grieving a future that I thought I would have already. You know, I thought that I would already have had a four year old, you know, um, and there's still a chance. You know, my ovaries aren't completely diminished, but I just, I just have some unexplained handicap. You know, I don't have the energy right now to make a decision on what I'm doing next, but I'm sure one will come to me. Um, I, I could do another round. I'm just, I'm, I'm scared, you know, um, like I said, there are risks. I've, I've really come a long way. Like if you've been watching at all, I used to not even be able to look at a needle, you know, um, I still have a fear of it. And every single time. It sucks and I hate it. Um, and I've always just kind of taught myself through this that pain is in the past and I'll get through it. And I think the hard part is there is another layer. I can tell myself that all day, but it's also kind of a form of PTSD that comes along with it. Like, you know, you burn your hand on a stove. You don't go back to the stove and repeat the behavior, right? It's just really mentally hard to put yourself through this and then be like, oh, yeah, I remember what that felt like. Oh, sure, but let's do it anyways, you know? It's like I've got one good vein for bee work and I have tried other veins, you know, without success or even more pain. So this vein feels like it's going to break now because it's the only one that works and it's got scarring and, you know, it's just, um, you know, and then like this whole process is like, oh, you can't have sex with your husband <laughs> during it. <laughs> the risk of multiple pregnancies and then, of course, after surgery, you don't want anything going up in there. So, you know, it's like. It just takes the love out of all of it, you know? It's just so different. But all I know is I'm not the only person hurting in this world, and I can offer my comfort to others who are also going through a myriad of, you know, life pains and struggles. And sometimes when I'm helping someone else, it helps me to recover from my own feelings. So, you know, I'm still the person I've always been. I'm still here. I'm struggling, but I'd rather be around people and for people to continuously
be themselves and not feel like, you know, how like sometimes people are like, oh my God, why am I complaining about my life when you're going through this? I still want you to be the human that you are because I I like to support people as well. But that's kind of what's going on with me. Um, I'll keep you posted on what's next. It's just really hard. And I'm 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 nervous and I'm uncertain. And I guess that's okay for now. <laughs>